In this video, let's dive right into learning about what direct and partial variations of linear equations are and how we can identify them. So let's say that we had a linear equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. If the b in our equation was equal to zero, which would mean that our y-intercept is equal to zero, then our graph would just be y equals mx. A linear equation that can be expressed as y equals mx is called a direct variation. Direct variations have the dependent variable directly varying based on how the independent variable changes. We know, for example, that our m variable is the slope, which implies it is a number. So let's say that m is equal to 3. That would make this direct variation equal to y equals 3x. As we can see, as soon as we know the x value, we would know the y value immediately since there is no other variable to solve for. Another way to say the same thing would have been to say that y directly varies based on what x is, hence why this is called a direct variation. However, y does not always directly vary only based on the x variable. For example, sometimes the y variable will vary based on both what the x variable and also what the b variable is. In light of this, when our y-intercept is not equal to zero, we say that the equation is a partial variation. So let's say that there are two people. John makes $10 based on every hour worked and makes no other money from any other sources. Carol, however, makes $10 for every hour worked, but also makes an extra $20 from her allowance without doing any extra work. Which one of these people have an income equation that expresses a partial variation? Well, if we think about it, John makes $10 per hour and has no other source of money. So if we wanted to represent this in the form of an equation, it would be y equals 10x. Therefore, if he works zero hours, he makes zero dollars, and for every hour he works, he makes $10 more. Now, Carol, on the other hand, is a bit different. Since Carol gets a $20 allowance regardless of how much she works, her graph would imply that at zero hours worked, or shall I say an X of zero, her income would be $20. So if we wanted to represent Carol's situation in the form of an equation, it would be Y equals 10X plus 20. Therefore, if she worked zero hours, she would still make $20 unconditionally, and for every hour she works, she makes $10 more, including the initial 20. Thus, John's equation here would be considered a direct variation, while Carol's equation would be the one whose equation is the partial variation, since her income doesn't entirely depend on how much she works. Awesome. Well, that's the end of this lesson on direct and partial variations. Try to identify some more equations as being either a direct variation or partial variation to get more practice. So until next time, have a good one.